Uh, next, we are going to talk about phase lock loop, which is a very, very significant uh, thing from the aspect of uh, tracking. Uh, both frequency and phase. So, uh, phase lock loop is used to track frequency and phase of incoming signals. It's basically a feedback system, uh, as mentioned, used in numerous applications including synchronous demodulation of EM signals, the thing that we have been doing in chapter 4. Mm, if we specifically mention that we have an input and this is followed by a PLL as a system and then we have an output. So the input in terms of synchronous demodulation of AM would be like you will be getting an AM signal and then you will be passing it through a PLL and at the output of PLL you will be extracting a carrier that would be the true carrier right so the PLL will track the carrier of the incoming signal uh, similarly in chapter 5 we will talk about PLL in terms of FM demodulation another significant uh, equation of PLL uh, therein we would have FM at the input it would pass through a PLL and eventually we get back our message signal and then moreover, this is used in terms of frequency synthesis um, and uh, in uh, further in terms of digital uh, communications, we, talk, we, need, we have clock synchronization and clock recovery. So in general, it's a very, very important uh, phenomena and there are a lot of circuits that uh, accomplish the phase log loop. The fundamental building blocks, the fundamentals of uh, PLL or phase lock loop has basically three components. Uh, we have a voltage control oscillator, BCO, and uh, then we have a phase detector. This is simply a multiplier in amplitude modulation. We referred it by the symbol. So this is a phase detector. And then we have a low pass filter. Now, starting with the voltage control oscillator, so as the name suggests, its input is the voltage, which I have mentioned here as V2 of P. So, based on this voltage, it is going to extract out a signal which is V out of P, V naught of P. Right? So, what VCO does is it tries to track the incoming signal so it would try to match these two in terms of frequency and phase so whatever the voltage is over here it is going to govern linearly what uh, the output this one over here in terms of the number of cycles per second and the phase shift right over here we have phase detector which i have mentioned is simply a multiplier so this multiplies the incoming signal V input of T, which could be in our case just a simple AM signal, phi AM of T. So this is the phase detector, right? So next we have V1 of T, uh, which is simply uh, the error. You can may you may call it as an error. So this is uh, this is simply multiplying V input of T with the output of the oscillator, and over here we would have some sort of a signal that we will term as error. This is something that we need to minimize. After that, we have a low pass filter that is going to reject all the high frequency components. Now, considering that the input voltage V in of T is an AM signal, or for our um, understanding and simplification, let me say it's a single tone having a consistent frequency and phase. So, let's say that this is A sine uh, omega T T plus some phase theta input of t, theta i of t, while 
the output of VTO is let's say B cos omega TT plus theta naught of T, right? So before moving further, you would see that there is a phase shift of 90 degree. Phase shift of 90 degree. So why do we have that? Let me prove it with respect to a MATLAB simulation. So considering so considering that we don't have uh, this phase shift, that is, is this, we have a sign term here and then we have a sign term here. So if we simulate this, I have V in here and V out here. This is for 2 hertz. So if I'm going to simulate this, I would have these plots, which are uh, showing the input voltage and the output voltage of the oscillator and then the multiplication of these two. Why do we have multiplication here? It is coming from the phase detector from here, from here. So this one and this one, the input signal and the output signal of the oscillator, the so voltage control oscillator, is observed here, which I have mentioned as V1 of T. Right. So that is basically something that we have here. Right. So you would see when we multiply these two, so it, uh, the multiplication is plotted over here in the third plot and here in you can see if you take the average value so this has a height of 1 and a width or time of 1 right so the area would be actually 1 by 1 to 1 right but you see that half of the time it is going up and half the time it's 0 so overall the total area would be if you integrate this the area would be 0 0.5 right half of the time it is 0 and half of the time it is uh, you have something right so overall the average would be coming out to uh, to be around 0.5 right so which is not desirable since v1 of t is just identifying an error and if we have uh, a big uh, accumulative uh, area or some and then that means the average and uh, the error is quite big now consider another case when we introduce a phase shift that is from sine we introduce a phase shift of 90 degree and then plot it. So there is a difference here. In multiplication we have an upper lobe initially it's starting at 0 right and then it's going to 0.5 and then it's dropping to minus 0.5. So the upper lobe will cancel with the lower lobe and again the upper lobe will cancel with the lower lobe and eventually the overall area would be zero and that is something which we desire in PLM that the output of the phase detector uh, has minimum error right. So we fix a phase shift of 90 degree uh, between the input voltage uh, input signal and the output you can call it signal of the VCO. Now, moving on with the same example. So we have a V input of T, which I mentioned is A sine omega TT, and then we have V output of T, which is B cos omega CT. Let's uh, analyze further what we have over here. Right? So this angle, if we take the derivative of it with respect to time, so we would be having N instantaneous frequency of it. So if we differentiate it with respect to time, we would have simply WC plus theta naught of T dot, right? Or the derivative of that, of the angle, the phase, right? So what is theta naught of T? And what is omega C? Omega C is nothing but a free running frequency. Right? 
and this governs the change in frequency what i mean by that is that we have a constant c that is multiplied by the input voltage which is in our case v2 of t right so this theta uh, not the derivative of it is equal to some constant c multiplied by the voltage v2 of t which is coming from here so if the voltage is equal to zero this v2 of t is equal to zero so that would mean that this term theta naught of t is equal to zero and the output of vco is just operating at omega t which is the free running frequency right but if there is certain error at v1 of t you will pass it through the low pass filter you'll get um, what you call a proportion of that error at a lower frequency the higher frequency component will, uh, uh, will be rejected but this v2 of t would basically control the frequency at the v output of t now we have mentioned v1 of t over here so v1 of t is simply v1 of t is the multiplication of this and this the multiplication of v input of t and v output of t so this is v1 of t over here so that would be equal to a b sin omega c t plus theta i of t times sin omega c t plus theta naught of t right and if we consider this as alpha and if we consider this as beta then from trigonometric properties we can say this is equivalent to a b by 2 sine alpha minus beta so that means this omega c t and omega c t will vanish and you would have theta i of t minus theta naught of t you will have theta i of t minus theta naught of t plus uh, we would have a sine term which is basically the addition of the two arguments so that would be 2 omega c t plus theta i of t plus theta naught of t but since we have 2 omega c t that is it's a high frequency it is operating at high frequency so this v1 of t is, is going to be passed through a low pass filter and eventually we can reject this by means of a low pass filter all right so hence after passing through the filter um, that is h of s we would have v2 of t which is simply a b by 2 sine theta e of t so we have mentioned this over here as theta e of t and this is rejected so what is v2 of t this is v2 of t in the multi-node that is the output of the low pass filter now if we plot v2 of t with respect to error the angle is a sine function it is going to start with this and then odd function so we'll have something like that this is going to be 1 by 2 a b right so for any given point if this is the error the voltage would be on the y-axis that would be our b2 of t and that would be uh, effectively fed to the vco and the vco would then relate the output which is v out of t which is b cos 
omega c t plus theta naught of t. Right. So this means that we have theta naught of t and as I mentioned the differential of this one is giving us the instantaneous frequency that is theta uh, w uh, that is the instantaneous frequency over here omega c t plus theta naught dot of t the derivative of it right so the question is this uh, this theta naught dot of t is c v2 of t right so this would mean what we have over here is theta dot of t which is c v2 of t right so this would be equal to two of t and that is that you're getting um v1 of t which is a v by 2 sine theta e and convolving it with respect to the filter h of t this is coming from here over here so the input convolved with the filter and then you get v2 of uh, v2 of t right so this is basically we can simplify it to express that this is equivalent to 1 by 2 c a b so it's convolution so we keep this as it is so theta e change the variable to x since we are integrating from 0 to t and then we flip this one h t minus x dx right so that is basically our uh, theta dot of t which is going to govern the change in the frequency and phase of the output of the vcr so this whole thing actually simplifies our pnl model uh, considerably for example we have now an input which is theta i of t and then we have phase detector now we have another theta naught of t right and this theta naught of t is basically an integral of this one so we have an integral here 0 to t so over here we would have theta dot of t that is equivalent to c v 2 of t and over here we have the gains that is 1 by 2 c a b and from here h of s the transfer function of the filter right over here we would have the error theta e of t and in between we would have a sign of the argument to achieve here sine theta e of t so that is basically a simplified uh, model for the phase log u now we have uh, some gains which are involved in the phase log loop for example this a b and some constant parameters c so what they do is they track they help in tracking um, the changes in frequency so by adjusting them we can uh, ensure the area in which the loop would be established and it would be retained right now if we go back to this plot uh, you can observe that there is a kind of what you call a linear linearity in the initial values of sine and then you have non-linearity appearing as you move further away uh, from this point right so what we mean by that is over here it's kind of 
as error improves, the V2 of T, the voltage increases linearly. So based on the, the, the gains and these parameters, we have uh, the tracking capability of the input. Remember, the need of PLL is that we are considering that the user or the, um, the device which is getting an AM signal is mobile. And so the reference may have been changed because of Doppler shift, right? So we need to track that reference point. We need to track the carrier. So it says that for a given error, we can track it. But if it is go if it goes beyond beyond the range, then we would not be able to track it. So to justify this, uh, to further explain this, in fact, we have used this plot. Uh, this is our V2 of T, and this is basically plotted against the change in incoming frequency. So if the in and the input frequency is basically if you keep on increasing it. If the direction of sweep is towards the right, that is you are increasing the incoming frequency, right? So if the frequency increases, the error would increase. And if the error would increase, if the frequency increases, this error would increase. If the error would increase, this voltage would increase. If this voltage would increase, then the output of the VCO would try to capture the new frequency so that this error is minimized. Right, so if the input frequency is increasing, so you would have a point in which it would try to capture the input frequency. The VCO would try to capture the input frequency. Right, So this point in frequency, we call it as pull-in range or sometimes we call it as capture range. Right, so once you have, you're moving in this direction, so once you have, uh, once you reach the capture range, the frequency over here would uh, retain any changes in the incoming frequency. So the width you will track it. Even beyond the capture range, you have a hold in range. So it would hold until this point, until uh, the frequency is put up to this point. Once it goes to this point, then the PLL will not be able to hold or not be able to track the incoming frequency. If you're moving backward, if you're um, if you're moving away from the source, so that means the carrier frequency is basically getting slower. So if you're moving in that direction, now the capture range is not this one. This is not the capture range when you're moving in this direction. In fact, over here you have the new hold in our capture range. So this dotted line indicates that. So this is the new capture range. It will continue on here F0 and from F0 onwards toward the holding range, the end of holding range. After that, it is going to lose the tracking. So the overall tracking range, you can see it starts from here and terminates over here. While the capture range is something like it's starting from here and it's terminating at here. So once you are moving like this, if you increase the frequency, once you are in this range, no any changes either in, in this direction or in this direction will be captured uh, by the PLL. But you have to first come in the capture range, which is shaded over here. So initially, whether are you, uh, even if you're moving from uh, right to left, you have to reach here, or from uh, left to right, you have to reach here to establish a lock. Once the, uh, the PLL locks itself with the incoming signal, then it's going to track all the changes, right? So this is about the phase lock loop. Um, we have discussed some aspects uh, of it. Uh, from the understanding point of view, uh, there are some analysis that uh, we would expectedly do in chapter number five. And the material presented is based on the following uh, two references. Thank you.